What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a quick follow-up review in that I had a chance to watch the sequel films to the original Godzilla, notably uh, Ghidorah King, or sorry, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. So overall, if you've watched the first film, then you kind of get an idea for what the second and third films are going to be about in that Godzilla has to fight some new monsters. Um, in the second and third films, you kind of get the idea that um, Godzilla is now helping, or not necessarily helping humans, but he is kind of becoming their protector. So um, that's kind of the pivot of a role that he's taking from the first one. It's kind of a better understanding of the creature. So in the first film, it's one of those scenes where they don't know who, who Godzilla is. Godzilla doesn't know these people. So it's a tense face off. But once they come to the understanding that they're not going to hurt each other, then it works out a little bit better. Um, so the second and third films from there continue though the, from the first the themes of the first film in that they try their best as far as special effects go to bring these creatures to life so you can tell in the animation and you know in quotes special effects for Ghidorah, uh, Rodan, Mothra, and even Mechagodzilla that they're doing the best they can for their to the time so and they counter that with better storytelling and character development so in Ghidorah and in Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla you have good storytelling and then the um, fight sequences are kind of a uh, bonus to the film um, and I say bonus because when you watch it now it looks a lot like you have people in um, a, the Godzilla suit and a Mecha Godzilla suit in the King Caesar suit even put and basically in those characters you have people in suits for um, Mothra you kind of it looks like basically they had a big puppet of a worm um, and that they were pulled, moving around on strings. They could have potentially had a person crawling in a costume there. Um, so it kind of doesn't hold up. And even for Rodan, um, it kind of looked like they had a bird flying on wings and then they had you moved it around and you, they had basically a big puppet with strings to move the characters around. So one of those things where they did the best that they could. So it definitely stands out now as not being so hot and so good of a special effect. Um, another thing that doesn't hold up is the actual fight sequences. So it, when you watch the fight sequences now, it looks like you have Godzilla doing um, karate moves or basically fight sequences in uh, the form of a Godzilla suit. So it kind of looks silly. Um, with Mecha Godzilla, it's one of those themes that's kind of push forward through through to modern times it's a souped up um fighting machine so if you think of kind of like war machine in the iron man films a lot of a variety of weapons in a big suit of armor so mecha godzilla was probably the only one that I had the least complaints about um and then even with like king caesar um so along the same lines, basically trying to pull fighting or wrestling moves or karate or martial arts moves with whoever they are fighting against. So things like that don't hold up, but this, like I said, the storytelling does. So when watching the films, um, that's kind of what I would probably focus on more rather than the monsters and their fight sequences. Granted, those pro that's the starring feet or that's the future part of the film, but it's not the thing that would keep you watching through the end of the film or end of the films. Granted, they're not long at about an hour to 20 minutes to an hour and a half long, so it's not like you're spending a long amount of time watching the films, but um, they do make it feel like you're watching a two to two and a half hour film, two and a half hour long film by the way they um, intersperse the fight sequences and the main characters with the rest of the story and other characters and character development in the films. So that's really all there is for this particular review. Um, so I've gotten through the main story arcs of, story, or Godzilla films that I wanted to. 
Um, I was going to watch Godzilla King of the Monsters, but about 20 to 30 minutes into it, a lot of the film looked very familiar, and it turns out that Godzilla King of the Monsters was just the American remake um, of the Japanese version of the film, so uh, it looked, at least from the from beginning of it, from, one, from what I read online, is that the, a bulk of, the bulk of the film was the same as the original, except it was done in Majority, the majority of them was redone in English and then certain parts were changed so rather than a focus on the um, girl, the scientist, scientist um, assistant and the scientist and all those people, it was done from the point of view of an American reporter so when he's in various scenes you could kind of see where um, it was replaced from the original girl and the scientist and the crazy brother and all of that if you saw the original Japanese version as well. So I decided to skip that film just because I had seen the original and it didn't seem like there was going to be anything new I could really glean from a remake so I moved on to um, Ghidorah and um, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. So if you're a completionist and want to watch the original film as a classic uh, watching of them now then I would definitely recommend watching them um, but if you want to watch the more modern um, CGI heavy films then I would recommend watching the latest iterations that started in um, 2014 I want to say with um, Godzilla uh, King Kong or sorry King Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters um, just because it looks like they did spend enough time um, with the special effects and honoring the original uh, premise of the films and what and the work that they did in the original versions of the film. Um, granted, the story doesn't hold up as much, so that's the only kind of downside. But they didn't do a poor job of it to the point where it's they were terrible. Um, they definitely were not as good as the original as far as the stories and character development goes, but they do fix the problems that you see with the original special effects of the monsters, so it kind of, rather than making the whole overall film worse, they kind of leveled everything out, so it all falls into place a lot better. So if you want a more modern telling that looks better, decent storylines but good special effects in the modern version are the way to go. Um, there were a couple of Godzilla films I want to say in the middle um, between the originals and the current versions in I want to say the late 90s and somewhere in the 2000s. Um, I did not watch those but those were kind of okay to not very well received so I skipped over those just because those didn't really have uh, continued part in the cinematic universe I guess. Um, they potentially are sequels as far as um, continuing the story of Godzilla but not really so it's kind of one of those things that are in like another realm of potentially in the universe but not really but it doesn't really affect anything so it doesn't really matter that sort of thing so if I get around to watching them I might but no guarantees on that. I really just wanted to see the original version of the film now that I've seen the remakes of them so I can get a, get a better understanding of the source material. So overall if I was to grade the films I'd probably give them a grade of about a B on a modern sense of it just because it doesn't really hold up as far as the special effects go but the stories were done very well. Um, the black and white doesn't really hurt it um, so much as that it can also kind of be considered a period piece or like stock footage style filming so that actually doesn't it kind of negates itself and it's not really a bad thing. If I was to grade them on maybe um, watching them at the time or maybe it, when I was younger like in the 80s maybe even early 90s I'd probably give it a grade of around an A minus just because of uh, an er better or uh, is closer to when they came out um, and it's one of those things where it's not that they're bad films it's they're kind of they're now films of their times especially with the various computer and technical equipment that they use so it's one of those things where it kind of it definitely stands out as far as not really being forward thinking but it kind of works for what they or generally works for what they were trying to do 
So I'd probably overall to merge a potential, or if I had watched it when I was younger, to where to a better understanding while watching the film now, I'd probably overall give the um, even the original Godzilla to Ghidorah to Godzilla vs. Um, Mecha Godzilla. I'd give them a grade of like a B plus to an A minus. So like a, about an 88 to 92 percent grade. So overall, good films, like I keep saying, good, uh, good story development, good special effects for the time for what they tried to do. Watching them now, it definitely stands out as not being very well done, but when you consider what they were trying to do, it's definitely a good job. And you can kind of see that kind of inspiration when you read the stories of what George Lucas tried to do with Star Wars at the time, that he did not have the all the technical um, abilities that he had now making like when he made the prequels or even with the uh, sequel trilogy so what he did with star wars and new hope was very detail oriented very complex and he did he brought to life something that was very complex and hard to do but made it very visually appealing for the time and even though and even though if you watch the original cut of a new home now a lot of those things that he fixed in the special editions and later cuts definitely stand out but at the time didn't stand out as much because we were living in that time in the original version of it so it wasn't as noticeable as it is now so that's all there is for this review so um with that i my next reviews will are going to be for my the rewatch of game of thrones so for patrons i'm going to do a season by season a uh, quick review and then after I finish season 8 I'll do a full review for everybody so um, if you're not a patron yet then definitely sign up so you can get those as soon as those come out um, and once those are done then I'll probably go in and re or get my watch of Alien vs Predator and its sequel so I can review those. On April 23rd we have the new version of Mortal Kombat coming out so um, look out for that um, probably most likely um, within a couple of days of it coming out but definitely within the week after um, the release so most likely or definitely I want to say definitely by the end of the at the end of April so uh, look out for that review as well um, that's all I have scheduled for sure um, I did actually recently upgrade my cell phone from the OnePlus 8 Pro to the OnePlus 9 Pro so there's not really much of an upgrade I had rebates and some credit and gift cards to use so I upgraded there um, I may or may not do a review of that just because it's more of an incremental upgrade rather than a proper upgrade like from the OnePlus 5T to the OnePlus 8 Pro so um, we'll see I mean nothing to talk about as far as an upgrade yet but um, I might do a quick take or a quick review of uh, my thoughts on it after using it for a couple of days so potentially look out for something there but no guarantees um, and also if you're a patron definitely look out for the next Star Wars lore episode um, there will be a gameplay episode coming soon for um, if you're a subscriber to the YouTube channel for um, Star Wars The Old Republic I had a chance to play a lot longer than I normally do so look out for that um, but yeah, patrons get the Star Wars lore, so there's at least one good episode to get in there, maybe a couple more, or maybe two, at least two for sure, so look out for those as well. Um, so, But that's all there is for this particular review as far as Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla go. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, corrections, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. As a patron, you can leave a comment on the post on there at patreon.com slash patelln01 and of course the website is headphonesdeal.reviews where you can get quick access to subscription links supporting the show past episodes and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time <laughs>